So, uh, good morning, students. And I'm Dr. Vipin B. Gawande. And today's uh, for the gate class, uh, we will take the subject heat transfer. And the topic is heat exchanger. Okay. Um, this is the general the uh, the weightage uh, the the marks or the marks for the gate examination. Uh, so it is up to 18, 2018 from 2013. So uh, on an average, six to seven marks uh, that can be asked uh, for on this topic. Okay, uh, you will definitely get the questions from this topic. That is the heat exchanger. Now let us start with the uh, the basic theory, and we'll then we'll solve the problems from the gate examination. Now you all know what is meant by this heat exchanger. So it is a it is a system used to transfer the heat between the two or the more fluids. Okay. So that is the heat, uh, the exchange of the heat between the two systems. We call that as a heat exchanger. Now, uh, let us discuss about the different types of the heat exchangers. Uh, one is called as the parallel flow heat exchanger. Now, in this case, we have the hot fluid and the cold fluid enter at the same end of the heat exchanger, uh, flow at, in the same direction and leave at the another end. Okay. So if you check this parallel flow heat exchanger, so the cold and hot fluid, they are flowing in the same direction. Okay. So this TC1, it denotes the uh, the temperature for the cold fluid. And after the gaining the heat from the hot fluid, so the temperature will increase to the TC2. So this is TC1, it is the initial temperature for the cold fluid. And TC2 is the outlet temperature for the cold fluid. Okay, so this is higher. So it is rising. Now for the, uh, the hot fluid, TH1 is the entry temperature. Uh, so TH1 is the higher temperature here. Now, during uh, the flow of the hot fluid, it rejects its heat to the cold fluid, okay, because of the, the heat transfer, and its temperature decreases. So, the TH2, it comes here. So, there's a decreasing uh, trend for the, uh, the temperature graph uh, for the hot fluid, okay. So, TH1 and TH2, these are the temperatures for the, uh, the hot fluid, and TC1 and TC2, this denotes the temperature for the cold fluid, okay. So this is the uh, the graph for the temperature and the length. Uh, this x-axis denotes here the length, and this is the temperature. Okay, the y-axis is the temperature. So this is for the uh, parallel flow heat exchanger. Okay. Now uh, this is the, the counter flow heat exchanger. It is the opposite of the parallel flow heat exchanger. Uh, it it differs in uh, it differs in the direction uh, the fluid is flowing. So here in this case the uh, cold fluid it is flowing opposite to the direction of the hot fluid now if you check here uh, the tc1 so this is now the cold fluid is coming from the the bottom side so tc1 is the lower temperature after gaining the heat uh, again the temperature of the cold fluid will increase so for for the uh, cold fluid always the temperature will increase and for the hot fluid the temperature will decrease so tc1 is the entry temperature for the cold fluid after gaining the heat from the hot fluid its temperature will increase to the TC2. Uh, the direction of the flowing, uh, the flow of the cold fluid, it is uh, opposite to the hot fluid. So TC1 and TC2, these are the two temperatures. Okay, so this is for the cold fluid. And for hot fluid, uh, TH1 is the entry temperature and TH2 is the, the exit temperature. Uh, during the course of time, uh, the hot fluid will reject its heat to the cold, cold fluid and its temperature will decrease. So temperature decrease will be TH1 to TH2. Okay, so TH1 and TH2 are the two temperature uh, values for the hot fluid and TC1 and TC2, these are the two temperature values for the cold fluid. So if you check here, see, these are this is the diagram for the uh, parallel flow heat exchanger. So it is it looks something like this. And for the counter flow heat exchanger, if you check these arrows, so the hot fluid direct, uh, direction and cold fluid direction, it is opposite. And here both the directions are same. Okay, so here this is the direction is same for both the fluids. Okay. So that is the difference. Uh, if you check here, uh, the TH1 minus TC2, TH2 minus TC1. So uh, it seems that this temperature difference is approximately same. Okay. So here we'll get the same type of the temperature difference. That that condition we'll discuss uh, in the coming slide. Okay. So it looks like this uh, this temperature difference is same here. Okay. Uh, now <clears throat> the another kind of the uh, the heat exchanger that we call this as a condenser. Now, in condenser, now we know that uh, we have studied the thermal power plant. Uh, the steam is coming from the uh, uh, the uh, turbine, okay, and then it enters into the condenser. So this is the condenser which, which uh, where we are we are having the cold fluid, and the steam is coming from here. So this is this is the uh, the temperature it is coming from here, okay. Uh, so 
let me show you that one so this is it is coming from the turbine okay so this is coming from the turbine here uh, and then it is going uh, it is it is going again to the uh, this uh, the cold feed is going to the that uh, uh, the it is going again back to the uh, the boiler okay so we'll discuss that one after so so uh, whatever the the steam which is coming from the turbine so it rejects it heat to the the cold feed which is flowing in the condenser okay so there is a rejection of the heat okay now what will happen here the steam uh, will change its phase here the steam it changes its phase and from vapor to the liquid stage so we'll get condensed here okay so and we know that the phase change process so the phase change process always the phase change process it all it is a it is the isothermal process isothermal process means what it is the constant temperature process so uh, the temperature of the steam is higher okay uh, as compared to the temperature of the cold feed so here the phase change of the steam is occurring it is having the higher temperature th so here you see this is while plotting the graph between the temperature and the length this is th1 will remain same that is equal to th2 okay why this temperature is same because this is a isothermal process and this is a phase change process and phase change process it is always occurs at the constant temperature okay so there is a conversion of the uh, the uh, this uh, the steam that is from the vapor to the the liquid stage and this phase change pro process it is occurring at the constant temperature and this steam is having higher temperature so this is th1 is equal to th2 so this will remain constant now what will happen to the cold feed the cold feed will accept this heat or it, it is absorbed this heat and its temperature will increase from tc1 to tc2 this is tc1 and tc2 these are the two temperatures for uh, the cold feed and when it accept the heat from the steam so its temperature will increase so the graph will increase here it, it is having the increasing trend here so this is tc1 and tc2 while the for the steam okay so for phase change process so th1 will remain equal to th2 so this is the uh, the temperature and the length graph for the condenser so these graphs are very important because whenever in the exam example the condenser uh, when when they will give uh, the example related with the condenser we have to draw these graphs so these graphs are very important so always remember in condenser uh, the steam it changes its phase that's why and the phase change process it always occur at constant temperature so that's why th1 will remain th2 so this is the horizontal graphs in the case of the condenser okay while the uh, the cold feed it increases its temperature so tc1 it goes to the tc2 so this is the higher temperature for the cold feed okay so this is for the condenser okay uh, this is this is again the same thing that that we have discussed okay this is related with the thermal power plant if you check here so this is the temperature and the entropy graph for the uh, the, uh, the thermal power plant now if you check here this is the condenser okay this is the condenser 6 and 1 okay 6 and 1 so when we plot this on the uh, the temp uh, temperature and entropy diagram if you check here this is 6 1 okay this is 6 1 so this is 6 1 means what this uh, this 6 1 means uh, we have this 6 1 is the uh, horizontal line this horizontal line denotes the what this is t1 is equal to t6 okay that means whatever the steam which is coming from here t6 is the entry temperature of the steam and this is the outlet temperature of the steam okay so t1 and t6 so that phase change process it is occurring at the what the constant temperature so the same thing this this graph it is uh, the same phase change process it is given here th1 is equal to th2 okay and that is occurring at what the constant temperature okay constant temperature is there okay and this so this is the final graph for the condenser okay now let us discuss about the fourth type that is the evaporator now we know this evaporator it is associated with the uh, refrigeration system so this is our abs vapor absorption systems uh, we have condenser we have compressor evaporator and the expansion device now uh, if we plot this thing uh, on temperature entropy diagram so this is again our ts diagram so if you check we are we will be concentrated on the evaporator so here this is one and four so if you concentrate here uh, this is one and four so this is the straight line this is the straight line that is that means t1 is equal to t4 okay this is t1 is equal to t t4 okay so now uh, 
the uh, in the evaporator we have that cold fluid okay so we in, in, we have the cold fluid okay so that is these t1 and t4 these now temperatures are related with the cold fluid so that's why here in this case tc1 will remain uh, uh, will will remain uh, equal to the tc2 okay because here there will be the phase change process for the refrigerant okay and whenever there is a phase change process for the refrigerant it will always occur at a constant temperature and the refrigerant is a cold fluid so that's why the temperature tc1 now will be equal to tc2 and this this temperature line will be the straight line for the evaporator okay this line will be the uh, the straight line for the evaporator and he, in this case what will happen for the uh, for the other for the hot uh, the hot fluid the hot fluid will reject its heat okay so it the the hot the hot fluid will reject its heat to the cold fluid and that's why its temperature will decreases that's why th1 will be will be uh, the temperature for the hot fluid will decreases from th1 to th2 okay so this is the diagram for the evaporator okay so in evaporator the cold fluid temperature will remain same while in case of the condenser the hot fluid temperature will remain same so that you have to understand so this is the, uh, these two things you have to remember and these are the two graphs for the evaporator and the condenser so always remember this this three uh, these four graphs so four graphs means this is the par the graph for the parallel flow heat exchanger this is for the uh, counter flow heat exchanger this is for condenser okay for condenser hot fluid it, uh, uh, the hot fluid temperature is same and for the uh, for the evaporator the cold fluid temperature is same okay so these four four graphs you have to remember based on these four graphs only you will get the questions in the in the gate examination okay now now we will dis discuss another concept that is called the overall heat transfer coefficient we know that the heat transfer coefficient okay uh, that is that is related with the h now we have three modes of heat transfer one is called the uh, conduction convection and radiation okay now if we consider the case of heat exchanger what will happen here we'll get all the three three modes of heat transfer okay so what will happen first of all the the, uh, the heat is transferred from fluid to the wall okay so this is by means of the convection now in the wall the the heat is transferred through the conduct the conduction and then from wall to the other fluid it is transferred again by means of uh, uh, from wall to the again it is transferred by means of the convection again okay so here this is convection in the middle we have conduction okay and then afterwards again we have the convection so uh, there are different types of the uh, the uh, the modes of the heat uh, the conduction it is asso uh, it associated okay so for uh, for so instead of using the separate uh, the mode uh, the heat transfer coefficient for this mode of conduction we are using uh, one combined uh, heat transfer coefficient okay so that is called as the overall heat transfer coefficient so overall heat transfer coefficient it is associated with the combined modes of heat transfer this is associated with what whenever we are considering the combined modes of heat transfer so we are considering what the overall heat transfer coefficient okay so here we are considering overall heat transfer coefficient and it is denoted with what the letter capital u okay and this overall heat transfer uh, the total heat transfer it is denoted as q is equal to u a theta m so this is the formula for the heat transfer so total heat transfer it is denoted with q is equal to u a theta m now what is this theta m so this is called as the log logarithmic mean temperature difference that is called as the lmtd okay this is called as the LMTD. So logarithmic mean temperature difference theta m. We will see how to calculate this theta m for all types of the uh, the heat transfer. Okay. Now uh, the heat balance equation will be what the heat uh, heat will be given from the hot fluid and the heat will be accepted or the uh, absorbed from the cold fluid. So the basic formula is Q is equal to m C P delta T. So here for hot fluid it is m H prefix H. So this H is for the hot fluid. CPH, okay. So that uh, that is the specific heat of the hot fluid. Now, what will be the what will be the temperature difference for the hot fluid? It is higher temperature minus lower temperature. So TH1 minus TH2 for hot fluid. So TH1 minus TH2. Uh, what will be the uh, the uh, the heat transfer for the cold fluid? See, heat absorbed from the cold fluid. So it is again MCP delta T. So MC and delta temperature difference here. So this is what m this is cold fluid 
this is uh, cp cold feed and what will be the temperature for the cold feed so this is higher temperature minus lower temperature what will be the higher temperature in the cold feed it accept the heat so tc2 is higher so that's why this is tc2 minus tc1 okay so temperature difference in case of the cold feed will be tc2 minus tc1 while in case of the hot fluid it is th1 minus th2 so this is very important so that you have to understand okay so the temperature difference for the hot fluid is th1 minus th2 okay so th1 minus th2 this is for the hot fluid and tc2 minus tc1 that is the temperature difference for the cold fluid so okay so you have to be very careful otherwise we'll, you will get here negative sign here okay don't take tc1 minus tc2 okay so higher temperature for in case of the cold fluid is tc2 2 minus 1 for cold fluid 1 minus 2 for the hot fluid this is the combined equation u a heat transfer coefficient and theta m what will be the unit for this one so what will be the unit for q so the unit for m so that is the mass flow rate so that is kg per second so this is uh, hello sir ha uh, sir the m mass flow rate kilojoule per uh, sorry kg per second madhe gaycha ka hour madhe gaycha this is kg per second we will we'll, we'll, we'll calculate the unit for q I see here kal ek example solve karat hoto mi tamhas te adle lete jase ha okay let us see here okay so this is in uh, this is in kg per second okay so you have this is in kg per second now what will be the uh, cp value this is in joule per joule per kg okay kg this may be degree celsius or degree kelvin okay whatever may be it be okay and then temperature difference will be in uh, you you can take that that in kelvin or in degree celsius whenever there is a difference okay whenever there is a difference you can take the temperature in degree celsius whenever a single temperature is there okay always remember this one. whenever single temperature is there always take that temperature in kelvin okay that that you have to consider because when we take the difference either it is in degree celsius or kelvin it it it, it don't make any difference okay so we'll take here the difference is in degree celsius now what will degree celsius degree celsius it get cancel kg kg get cancel now what is joule per second joule per second is what it is watt yeah. okay joule per second is what watt so what is the unit for q the q, the unit for q will be watt here okay watt here so whenever if if the kg per hour is there okay if kg per hour is there so for getting this watt unit Watt means what? It is joule per second. You have to convert that into second. Okay. Then only you will get here that unit as a watt. Okay. So this mass flow rate is always in kg per second. Okay. We have to follow that MK system. So always it comes in the second. Okay. And then only you will get this as a final unit as a watt. Okay. So this is the W. Okay. So clear this. I think this unit is clear to know. Hmm? Okay. Okay, yes, so this uh, unit conversion, yeah, okay. So uh, what you have to, we will go with this this formula is Q is equal to MCP delta T and Q is equal to MCP delta T for hot fluid and cold fluid and final total heat transfer will be Q is equal to UA theta M. Okay, now uh, this U is clear, uh, area, area will be, area, what, what, what will be the area? Now this is a circumferential area. So this is a pi D L, okay. So we have to take this as a circumferential area. So this is pi d l circumferential area we have to take, not the cross sectional area. Circumferential area we have to take, you, uh, to take that is equal to the pi d l circumferential area because heat transfer will occur from the surface, okay? Not from the cross section, it is occurring from the surface. So we have to take pi d l, okay? Pi d l will be there. Now we'll we'll concentrate on this one theta m. What is this theta m? This is LMTD, okay? Log mean temperature difference. Now how to calculate this log mean temperature difference now? So we'll take the first case that is the parallel flow heat exchanger. You know how, how to calculate. Uh, now, this is the diagram for the parallel flow heat exchanger. We know that in parallel flow heat, heat exchanger, both the fluids are flowing in the same direction. Uh, the temperature of the, the hot fluid will decrease while the temperature of the cold fluid will increase. So the graph will come something like this. Now, what will happen to, uh, we, have, we are interested in calculating the theta m. So for this theta m, the formula will be uh, theta 1 minus theta 2 ln uh, theta 1 divided by theta 2. Now, what is this theta 1? Theta 1 is the temperature difference uh, from the left hand side that is TH1 minus TH1 it is minus TC1 so that is equal to Theta 1 so we, yeah, this is very, this is very important okay for calculating this Q for calculating this Q you have to take you have to take the temperature difference at TH1 minus TH2 okay 
Now this theta, while calculating this theta 1, it is the temperature difference from Th1 minus Tc1. So this is theta 1. Okay. What is theta 2? Th2 minus Tc2. Okay. Th2 minus Tc2 is theta 2. Okay. And this is the ln theta 1 minus theta. So we'll get the value for this theta m. Okay. Uh, we will will make use of this uh, the combined heat capacity mh in that that is in the the second lecture that is in NTU method. Okay, so we don't require here for calculating the effectiveness and NTU. So this is the uh, combined one, uh, which is the product of uh, CPH and the mass flow rate. Okay, so we'll consider this afterwards. Don't uh, bother about these two things. We'll we'll repeat this in the second lecture again. We'll first concentrate on uh, the temperature difference, which are very important here. So what I have told you. While calculating the heat transfer, individual heat transfer, take the temperature difference for the particular fluid. Whenever, whenever it is a hot fluid, take the temperature differences for the hot fluid, Th1 minus Th2. When it is the cold fluid, it is 2 minus 1, that is Tc2 minus Tc1. While calculating the LMTD, theta m, it is theta 1. Temperature difference theta 1, it is calculated from Th1 minus Tc1. And theta 2, it is calculated from Th2 minus Tc2. So this temperature difference you have to consider. Okay, so these are very important. For theta one, don't take it is the hot fluid temperature. Okay, it is temperature from left hand side, and theta two is the temperature from the right hand side. Temperature difference from the right hand side. Okay, so this is for the parallel flow heat exchanger. Now let us discuss about counter flow heat exchanger. Now what will be the theta one? Theta one for uh, now for uh, the counter flow heat exchanger, the uh, the uh, di the direction of the flow for the fluid is different. So TH1 and TH2, here TC1 and TC2, okay. So the temperature difference theta1 is what? It is TH1 minus TC2 now here. This is TC2 and theta2 is what? TH2 minus TC1, TH2 minus TC1, okay. So once you, you have drawn the diagram, so then afterwards it is very simple to calculate theta1 and theta2. So be careful here, for parallel flow, it is TH1 minus TC1 while here th1 minus tc2 in counter flow heat exchanger okay so don't bother about this one just draw the diagram you will get the correct uh, theta1 and theta2 okay so that that comes from here now this is the uh, the important case uh, these space cases now i have told you while discussing about the counter flow heat exchanger what will happen if theta1 is equal to theta2 if theta1 it comes out to be uh, uh, it is equal to the theta2 then in that case, uh, in the in that case, what will what will be the uh, the answer? Okay, so if the theta one and theta two is equal to theta, okay, so what what will happen? The theta one will be zero, okay. So uh, the value will be indeterminate. So how to calculate then uh, the uh, the value for this uh, uh, LMTD? Okay, so this theta m will be now uh, in that case if theta one is equal to theta two, that means if theta two is equal to thirty degrees Celsius. And theta one is also theta, uh, is equal to thirty degrees Celsius. So in that case, if you calculate this theta m, so it, it 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 comes out to be indeterminate. So in that case, to calculate the value, uh, we have to take uh, theta one is equal to theta two is equal to theta. That means theta m will be the uh, thirty degrees Celsius. Uh, thirty degrees Celsius in that case. Okay. So it is equal to theta. You have to take it is equal to theta. So that theta m uh, will be equal to theta. So this is a very important case generally asked in the examination. Okay. So uh, generally students they calculated the value by taking the temperature difference and it comes out to be uh, indeterminate in that case if this theta 1 and theta 2 this temperature difference are equal so you take here either you take theta 1 here or you take theta 2 both are both are same so that equal be equal to theta the another uh, special case will be uh, uh, if you are, if this theta 1 and theta 2 temperature difference theta 1 and theta 2 if it is less than 1.7 if it is less than 1.7, in that case, the value of this theta m will be AMTD. That is equal to arithmetic mean temperature difference. And that value will be calculated as theta 1 plus theta 2 divided by 2. Okay. So, we will get here very rare case for this case number 2. But we will we'll, we'll be get uh, the questions will be asked on the case number 1. But you also remember this, this case also. Uh, if the question will be asked in the that is if uh, theta uh, two temperature uh, te temperature differences are given to you theta one and theta two and if they are saying that it, its uh, ratio is less than 1.7 so what will be the value of this theta m so that is, that will be not the log mean temperature difference then it will be converted into arithmetic mean temperature difference so you have to take that value theta is equal to theta one plus theta two divided by two okay 
so these are the two special cases uh, in case of the uh, these uh, calculations for the uh, this lmpt value okay so that we have to remember here okay now uh, this is again the one one mark question that that was asked in the gate examination so we are we are saying that uh, the theta m okay we are saying the theta m uh, the for the counter flow okay for the the counter flow it is greater than that for the uh, the parallel flow okay so the, this is theta m for the uh, the parallel flow so this is the general the conclu conclusion okay so theta m will be definitely for, uh, the higher for the counter flow as compared to the uh, the parallel flow okay uh, but what what it indicates okay what this statement indicates so we have returns q is equal to what u uh, a and this theta m okay now if this theta m for counter flow heat exchanger if this is higher if this is greater now this is definitely greater okay by a practical uh, observation the lmtt value for counter flow heat exchanger it is greater than the parallel flow heat exchanger now what is the significance of this statement now if the the uh, the count this this lmtt value for counter flow it is greater so i am taking this a here i am taking this a here at the bottom so what will happen if this is greater if this value is greater so what will happen to this area okay so this uh, this area will be lower okay we uh, we have to reduce this area okay we have to reduce this area then only this this uh, uh, this value will will increase this value will increase now the reduction of area means what we if we are reducing the area for the counter flow heat exchanger so then this is having the compact design this is having the compact design okay so this is having the compact design and that's why because of this compact design this counter flow heat exchangers are generally used in the industry okay so that is the significance of this statement and uh, this is this question was asked for one mark uh, this what 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 is the uh, the significance of this uh, this lmtd value for counter flow heat exchanger so for counter flow heat exchanger the lmtd value is greater than that of the parallel flow heat exchanger so the uh, area is less okay so it is less we have to use the lesser area for the uh, for the counter flow heat exchanger and lesser area means what the design for the counter flow heat exchanger is a compact design okay and com and everyone want the compact design for the heat exchanger so that's why the counter flow heat exchangers are generally used for uh, as compared to the parallel flow heat exchanger okay so that is the the meaning for the for this statement okay now so i hope uh, you understand all the uh, type of the heat exchangers the formulas okay now let us use all these formulas here okay so if you want me to just uh, revise all the things so we will revise it here something like this okay now suppose uh, th this is for the uh, so parallel flow heat exchanger so what is the diagram for parallel flow heat exchanger so this is the diagram for the parallel flow heat exchanger where this is what this is th1 this is th2 this is tc1 and this is tc2 okay the direction for the arrows are same this is the parallel flow heat exchanger okay so this is this is what this is theta1 and this is always theta2 okay this is for what this is parallel flow heat exchanger now what is the diagram for the counter flow heat exchanger so the diagram for the counter flow heat exchanger will be something like this this is counter flow this is always a th1 this is always th2 now where is the tc1 so don't get confused the always the lower temperature is here and after absorbing the heat it will increase to tc2 so tc2 will will come here okay so tc2 will come here so tc2 is there this is for what the, uh, the counter flow heat exchanger this is always theta 1 and this is always theta 2 this is for counter flow heat exchanger okay now then we have discussed about what the uh, condenser so in condenser i have uh, told you the hot fluid temperature will remain same so hot, hot fluid temperature is what th1 and th2 so hot fluid temperature will remain same what will happen to the cold fluid it's the cold fluid temperature will increase so this is tc1 and this is tc2 so this is for what this is for the condenser this is again theta1 for the condenser this is always this is always the theta2 for the condenser okay so this is this this di uh, the diagram is for the uh, the condenser okay now finally we have the evaporator so what is the evaporator in evaporator the cold fluid temperature is remain same so tc1 is equal to tc2 okay now what will happen to the hot fluid hot fluid temperature will always decrease 
okay so this is th1 and this is th2 okay this is theta 1 for calculating the uh, uh, the lmtt value and this is the theta 2 uh, the for calculating the lmtt value so this is evaporator this is evaporator this is condenser this is counter fluid exchanger this is parallel fluid exchanger and one formula you have to remember q is equal to u a theta m how to calculate this theta m so this is theta 1 minus theta 2 and this is ln theta 1 divided by theta 2 theta 2 this is to calculate okay so theta 1 is here okay and theta 2 is here on this side so always right hand side difference is theta 2 and left hand side uh, temperature dif difference is for theta 1 so this, this you have to remember and one general formula for calculating the heat transfer for cold fluid and hot fluid that is equal to m cp and here the temperature difference delta t okay this is the mass flow rate if this is for hot fluid so you have to write down here h h for hot fluid it is uh, th1 minus th2 what will be the temperature uh, for what will be the hot uh, the uh, the uh, the uh, flow rate for the heat transfer rate for the cold fluid so for cold fluid it is c here c here now for cold fluid higher temperature is tc2 so don't forget to write down here tc2 minus tc1 this is tc1 for hot fluid it is th1 minus 2 1 minus th2 for cold fluid it is higher temperature tc2 minus tc1 so you remember all the uh, we required all these things for calculation okay now just quickly take the uh, we'll take the examples here okay now uh, ah yes uh, sir, the NTU yeah ntu will take in the second lecture that that we'll discuss in first we'll we'll take the uh, the examples on lmtd and then we'll discuss about the ntu method hmm? okay. that, that is the se second part second part that we'll discuss in the second part okay First, let us discuss the gate the uh, gate examples on LMTD first. Okay, so this is the uh, this much theory we you required for the LMTD. Okay, so for uh, diagram for parallel flow, counter flow, condenser, evaporator, and this formulas. Okay, only this this much formula is sufficient to uh, solve the problems. Now let us discuss about this one. Now what is this? Uh, read the problem now. Okay, so this is this is from gate examination, so about 2014. Okay. But the same type of problem will be repeated uh, now onwards only. Okay. Now a double pipe counter flow heat exchanger. Okay. So whenever the counter flow heat exchanger is there. Okay. So what we have to do? Counter flow heat exchanger. So counter flow heat exchanger. The diagram is something like this. Okay. So the flow is different. Always here. This is a TH1. Here this is a TH2. Now lower temperature is TC1, and this is what this is TC2. Okay, so this is the diagram. Uh, diagram for what the counter flow heat exchanger. So see the first statement of the problem, and we will draw the our diagram. Counter flow heat exchanger. So draw the diagram. If counter flow heat exchanger is not mentioned, this this word if it is not mentioned in the uh, problem, and only heat exchanger it is mentioned in the problem. So then by default it is always parallel flow heat exchanger. So that you have to remember. If this counter flow it is not mentioned. So then the diagram diagram it is always for the uh, diagram you have to draw the diagram for the parallel flow heat exchanger okay now here it is specifically mentioned counter flow so that's why we are we are drawn the diagram for the counter flow heat exchanger okay now let us go for the next one now we transfer the heat between the two water stream so we have water here now tube side water tube side water at 19 liter per second Okay, 19 liter per second is heated, is heated from, is heated from 10 degrees Celsius to 38 degrees Celsius. Now water is heating. So water will, which water will be heated? Temperature is, uh, temperature is increasing. So this is the cold fluid. Okay, so this is the cold fluid. It is increasing from 10 degrees Celsius to 38 degrees Celsius. So this is what the, this is the temperature that is the 10 degrees Celsius and TC2 is what it is. 38 degrees celsius okay that is for the this this uh, information it is given with uh, regarding the cold fluid and it's uh, the, what, what is it the mass flow rate it is 19 liter per second so this is for cold fluid so this is cold fluid it is uh, the, here it is this is 19 and it is given in terms of the liter per second okay so this is for cold fluid the data is provided because the temperature is increasing and temperature will increase for what it is for the cold fluid 
Now shale side. Shale side water at 25 liter per second. Now shale side. Now what will? What is the remaining here? So it is uh, the hot fluid now. So 25 uh, liter per second. So this is for the hot fluid. Now what will be there? Uh, entering at 46 degrees Celsius. So it is entering at 46 degrees Celsius. Now what is the entering temperature? So TH1 is the entering temperature. So this is 46 degree Celsius. Okay. So entering temperature for the for the hot fluid will be 46 degree Celsius. Okay. Then and uh, okay, mass flow rate is given. Assume constant properties of the water. Density is given. Okay, uh, thousand kg per meter cube. So density is given. This is thousand. Okay, thousand kg or uh, thousand kg per meter cube. Okay, mass mass per volume. So thousand kg per meter cube. And specific heat is given. Four one eight six joule per kg Kelvin. Uh, specific heat. Specific heat for water is given. So this is four one. 4186. Now, the uh, U unit is very important. Joule per kg, it is Kelvin. Okay. So, Kelvin and that degree Celsius, it doesn't make difference here because all the temperatures are uh, temperature difference if we take. Okay. If single temperature, uh, always take the temperature in Kelvin. Okay. Now, the LMTT in degree Celsius, we have to calculate. Okay. We have to calculate here the LMTT. So, LMTT means what? We have to calculate here theta m. Okay. So, that, that value we have to calculate. So this is the problem given uh, to us and we have to calculate the value of the theta m. Okay. So I hope you understand we have calculate or uh, we have we have, we have drawn the diagram for the control heat exchanger where the temperature is increasing from 10 to 30 degrees Celsius. Temperature is increasing means it is a cold fit. Ten, the minimum temperature is 10. Uh, the outer temperature is 38. And the another temperature it is entering at 46. Entering and exit temperature it is not given. So this is not given. And mass flow rate it is given as for the cold fluid is 90 liter per second and for hot fluid is 25 liter per second. Density is given and CP for water is given. Both are water. So this is also water and this is for also the water is there. Okay. Now we have to calculate this theta m. Now this theta m will, uh, uh, this theta m, uh, we know the formula for this theta m. So what is this formula? This is theta 1 minus theta 2 and ln that is theta 1 uh, divided by theta 2. Okay, this is theta 1 divided by theta 2. Now, what is this theta 1? So, this theta 1, this theta 1 is equal to what? This TH1 minus TC2. Okay, so this is TH1 minus TC2. Okay, so this is this is known to us. That is 46 minus 38. So, this value is known to us. Theta 1 value is known to us. What is the value of this theta 2? Theta, theta 2 will be, this theta 2 will be here. Theta 2 will be here. This temperature difference, right hand side temperature difference. So this is TH2 minus TC1. But, but in this case, uh, TC1 is known, uh, TH2 is not known. So TH2 is the unknown. This, this TH2 is unknown. Now, how to calculate this value? TH2. So what we will use? We will use the heat transfer formula for the hot fluid. So M, C and delta T. We will use for this hot fluid. Okay. Then this is CPH. Okay. This is for the hot fluid. What, what is the uh, temperature difference for the hot fluid? TH1 minus TH2. TH1 minus TH2. TH1 minus TH2. Now, in this case, what will happen? Uh, the uh, This MH is known. Uh, CPH is known. TH1, uh, TH1 is known. TC2, TH2 is not known. Uh, what we will do? We will we'll take this is for the hot fluid. We will combine this with the cold fluid. Because heat uh, heat absorb is equal to heat uh, heat rejected okay so that is the energy balance equation so here we'll take m m c then c p c here it is what what is the temperature difference here t c 2 minus t c 1 t c 2 minus t c 1 okay this is the energy balance equation for this uh, the, uh, the counter flow heat exchanger so here this m c is known uh, c p c is known TC2 is known and TC1 is known. So everything is known here. Only the unknown is what? It is the TH2. So we can calculate the value of TH2 from this energy balance equation. Now we can delete this CPH and CPC because both the values are same. The CP, both, both are water. So this value is same. 4.186 uh, 4, 4, joule per kg Kelvin. This value is same. Okay. Now we have to take this mass flow rate is in kg per second. It is given in liter per second. So what is the value of this MH? So this MH will be, it is given in uh, 
24, sorry, it is 25. This is in liter per second. Now, one liter, it is equal to what? One liter is equal to 10 days to power minus 3 meter cube, meter cube. Okay, so this is meter cube per second. So I have converted this liter into meter cube. So one liter is equal to 10 days to power, uh, 10 days to power minus 3 meter cube. Okay. Now I have to convert this in kg per second. So how we, how, uh, what what I will use now? I will multiply this by density. So density is given 10 uh, 1000. This is kg per meter cube. I will multiply this uh, by density. So what will happen here? This meter cube meter cube get cancelled. This 10 to power 3 and this 10 to power 3 will get cancelled. So this mh will be 25. Now what will remain here? Hello. Kg per second. Ah yes. Hello. Uh, sir, upon 1 kg is equal to 1 liter get on a direct. 1 kg is equal to? 1 liter get on a. 1 kg. Haan, that's a good shot. That, 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 that comes in the same, same. 1 liter is equal to uh, 10 raised to power minus 3 meter cube. And it's going to multiply 1000 meter. That same, same thing you'll get 1 kg. But sometimes what will happen if density will differ, okay? So in that case, you have to the conversion of the problem. Water certificate. Water certificate. Yes, huh? huh, water certificate. Water water certificate. Water certificate. Yeah, huh. but if, if in the case, uh, CP value and other will change. So in that case, you have to change the density. The density is uh, different each other. In that case, you have to change the density. So uh, instead, we can convert that into first into meter cube and then we'll multiply it by density. So if it is water, then definitely we'll get the same value. If, if density will be different, so we'll get the corresponding value for that one. So, okay. So this is for 25 kg per second. Now on the similar ground, what will be the value for this, uh, the cold feed? It is 90 liter per second. So it will come out to be 19 kg per second. Okay. It is 19 liter. So you'll know now MH is known, uh, MC is known, all the temperatures are known. Okay. Uh, we will we'll we can calculate the values. We'll get here a TH2 value. Okay, so this is TH2 value will be will be calculated. This will come in degree Celsius. Now, whatever the value that is TH2 value is there, so you you uh, put that value here TH2. T calculate the value TH2 minus TC1. You will get theta theta two value. Theta one value is known. After that, you calculate the value of this theta m. Okay, so if you calculate this value of theta m, so that value will come to be 11.03. It value will come to be 11.03. Okay, so what we have to do, see, <clears throat> uh, theta m is unknown. We have write down the formula for theta uh, theta m. It is theta one minus theta theta two. Theta one is known. Uh, th one minus uh, th uh, two. So this is known in theta two. Th two is unknown. So we have used we have make the energy balance equation, and from that energy balance equation we have calculate the value of th two. We have put this th two value in our theta two and then that value we have put in theta m so we'll get if you calculate all these things so you'll get the answer as 11.03 okay so <clears throat> so so see answer uh, see the answer is is important but the procedure it is it is also important so you you must know how to calculate the answer here okay so this is the procedure for calculating that particular answer okay so i hope you understand just calculate it uh, you, will get, you will get the same answer here okay so for the first question okay this is the procedure of what, how we are calculate the unknowns. Okay. Now let us go for the second question. A balance counter flow heat exchanger. Again, the same thing. The counter flow heat exchanger is given. So what is the diagram for the counter flow heat exchanger? So it, it looks something like this. Okay. So here this is counter flow heat exchanger. This is TH1. This is TH2 here. Now lower temperature. This is TC1. This is TC2. Okay, this is theta one. This is theta two. Okay, this is counter flow heat exchanger. Now, has a surface area of twenty meter meter square. Okay, so area is given. So this is equal to twenty meter square. We will concentrate on the procedure only. Uh, definitely, we will get the answer. Overall heat transfer coefficient twenty watt per meter square Kelvin. So we we have we have given U also that is equal to twenty watt per meter square Kelvin. Okay, so that is also given 20 watt per CP value is given 1000 uh, joule per kg. Okay, for air. Okay, for air, it is CP value is given. So CP value is 1000. 1000 joule. This is joule per kg Kelvin. So that value is given. Uh, okay. 
super <coughs> okay and entering at uh, 0.4 kg per second okay and 200 280 kelvin is to be preheated is to be preheated by the air okay leaving the system okay leaving the system at 0.4 kg per second and 300 kelvin okay now okay now here you see now this is what the air entering this is air is entering into the system okay this is air entering in the system so this is what this is uh, this is related with what this is related with the the entry entry uh, the entry uh, fluid okay and leaving the system at 0.4 kg and 300 kelvin okay and leaving the system at uh, the uh, 4.4 uh, kg and 300 kelvin so okay so what what will be this uh, so we will write down this as a uh, 0 0.4 kg so for both the uh, the cold uh, for both the fluids okay that is air only it is uh, mass flow rate is 0.4 kg per second so mass flow rate is 0.4 0.4 kg, 0.4 kg per second. Okay, so this this is the 0.4 kg per second is given. Okay, and uh, air entering at 280 kelvin. Okay, 280 kelvin. So what is that 280 kelvin? So this is 280 kelvin entering temperature. Okay, this is entering temperature 280 kelvin. Okay, is to be preheated by the air. Okay, it is preheated by the air. Uh, by the air leaving the system at leaving the system leaving the system at 0.4 kg per second 0.4 kg second and 300 kelvin okay uh, okay uh, preheated uh, 280 kelvin is to be preheated okay so preheated air so okay so, so that is the entering temperature by the air by the air leaving the system at 0.4 kg per second and 300 kelvin okay and 300 kelvin so leaving the system leaving the system so the, that value will be how much that that value will be 300 kelvin okay so let us get uh, all the things clear here what is uh, the air entering at uh, this one and 200 kelvin is to be preheated by the air by the air leaving the system at 0.4 kg per second and 300 300 kelvin 300 kelvin the outlet temperature outlet temperature of the preheated air outlet temperature of the preheated air is so outlet temperature of the preheated air means what we have to calculate the value of here tc2 we have to calculate the value of here tc2 for both uh, the air uh, for both the fluid that is the cold fluid and the hot fluid this value is same mh and cph value is same okay this value is given same and we have to calculate the value of tc2 we have to calculate the value of tc2 here uh, how to calculate this value uh, uh, we will get okay so we will first uh, take mc uh, this is uh, cpc uh, then we have here uh, tc tc2 minus tc1 okay tc2 minus tc1 and we have here mh uh, cph th2 minus th1 Okay, TH2 minus TH1. Okay, so that, that values are given. Uh, MC and MH are same. Uh, this, this value as CPC and CPH. CPC and CPH value, values are also given. Okay, so this, this value uh, again will be the same for that, uh, these two things. We will make use of this one also, the, uh, the final value, the final heat transfer rate is equal to UA, uh, this is theta M. Okay, theta M. So, what will be the value here uh, this 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 temperature difference are same so this value will be this is equal to theta we'll make that a special case so theta here this is equal to 20 so if you calculate the total value so this becomes 20 multiplied by u is equal to 20 uh, then this is uh, area is equal to uh, 20 and theta m theta m so here so if you by this calculation if we uh, make the balance so that value will be 20 only okay so this value this value will comes out to be 8 8000 watt this value will be comes out to be 8 8000 watt here okay now uh, either of this this value q is equal to uh, this is mc uh, we have to calculate the tc2 value so tc2 minus tc1 
so we will make use of this uh, mc mc is equal to 0.4 cpc value is given as 1000 and we have to calculate the value of tc2 uh, what is this value tc uh, tc1 so tc1 is given to 80 is given to 80 kelvin and if you calculate this value q uh, sorry q is given q is how much q is 8000 mat so here we have to put here 8000 8000 and the only unknown is tc2 and if you calculate the value of this tc2 so this value will come out to be 300 see everything uh, we have we have taken here theta is equal to 20 so this temperature difference and this temperature will be will will, will remain same so tc2 will will come out to be what it comes out to be 300 uh, 300 kelvin 300 kelvin here okay so for this question uh, what we are we have we have uh, determined you have we have calculated the value of the uh, outlet temperature of the preheated air preheated air means this air is get heated so tc2 we have to calculate and here uh, the mass flow rate and these specificates are same so temperature difference will re remain same for here so this theta 1 and theta 2 are same this is theta 2 this is theta 1 both are same we have taken that is equal to theta uh, area and uh, the overall heat transfer coefficient is given so we are calculated overall heat transfer and then from that you overall heat transfer we have combined that overall heat transfer with the uh, the heat transfer rate for the MCP delta T for the cold fit and from there we have calculated the value of TC2. So TC2 will come out to be 300 Kelvin. So for this the answer will be B. The answer will comes out to be here B that is the 300 Kelvin. Okay. So this is again the, the simple questions. Uh, see uh, very limited calculations they uh, will be there in the gate examination just you have to understand the problem. So this is based on our that concept that is theta 1 is equal to theta 2 is equal to theta. Okay, from that we can have calculated the unknown value for TC2. Okay, now let us discuss about the third questions quickly. Uh, saturated steam at 100 degree condenses. So condenses, okay, so conden condensation process is there. So that means uh, this problem will be related with what? This problem will be related with our condenser. Okay, this is related with our condenser. So in condenser, I have told you the hot temperature will remain same while cold temperature will increase. So this is TH1, this is equal to TH2, and this is TC1 for the condenser and this is TC2 for the uh, condenser. This is theta1 and this is for theta2. This is the diagram for the condenser. Now saturated steam at 100 degrees Celsius. Steam, steam means it is what? Steam means it is uh, the... Uh, hot fluid okay this is the hot fluid so 100 degrees celsius so the, what is that the temperature so this is equal to 100 degrees celsius th1 is equal to th2 is equal to 100 degrees celsius okay now what will happen to uh, on the outside of the tube okay so steam so we so we have determined steam as a hot fluid and condenses okay so that is steam is changing its uh, phase so uh, phase change temperature that is the temperature for the phase change, it will remain same. So 100 degrees Celsius is equal to TH1 is equal to TH2. Now cold fluid enters at 20 degrees Celsius. Okay, so cold fluid. So cold fluid enters at 20 degrees Celsius. So minimum temperature it is entering. So this is 20 degrees Celsius TC1. And exit at 50 degrees Celsius. Exit at 50 degrees Celsius means TC2 is equal to 50 degrees Celsius. Okay, this is there. The value of log mean temperature difference. Okay, so they have asked us to, to calculate the value of log mean temperature difference. Okay, so now this will be very simple here. Only the thing is you have to understand that this is the problem for condenser. Now, what is this theta m? So this is theta 1 minus theta 2 divided by ln. This is theta 1 divided by the theta 2. What is the value of theta 1? Theta 1, theta 1 value is equal to how much? This is th1 minus tc1. So this is 100 minus 20. Okay, so this is 80 degrees Celsius. Okay, this value. This is 100. This is 20. Now, what is the value of theta 2? This is again TH2 minus TC2. TH2 is, is, is 100. This is 100. And this is minus 50. So, this is equal to 50. So, you will got the two values, theta 1 and theta 2. Just put all these values here and calculate the values of this theta. Yeah. So, if you put all these values here, the answer will be 63.82. If you calculate this, so you will get the answer as 63.82. The only uh, the only thing you have to remember is while using the uh, the sketch for this problem, 
you have to understand that this problem is related with the condenser okay and then once you plot this condenser uh, diagram for this problem so it is very simple to calculate the value of theta, uh, this lmtt value okay so this is just same theta 100 minus 20 and 100 minus 50 theta 1 and theta 2 put here you will get the answer as 63.82 so that is the answer for your uh, this given problem okay so this is from gate 2017 simple problem okay the fourth problem <clears throat> the fourth, pro fourth problem is uh, here it is in a counter flow heat exchanger so see uh, specifically mention it is a counter flow now what will be the diagram for this counter flow so just practice the diagram so uh, the other thing will be very simple for you okay so this is see just practice this uh, the every time uh, so this is uh, tc1 and this is equal to tc2 okay so these are the uh, the, uh, the diagram for the counter flow heat exchanger water is heated at the rate of 1.5 kg per second so water okay water will take this as a cold fit suppose 1.5 kg per second so this is for the water from 40 to 80 okay so water temperature is increasing from 40 to 80 so this is uh, 40 degree celsius and this is equal to 80 degrees Celsius. So 40 to 80, the water is increasing. Now what will happen to the next? Uh, okay, now here there are two fluids are there. One is water, another one is oil. Oil, by an oil, entering at 120 degrees Celsius. So, so water is entering at higher temperature of 120 and leaving at 60. So TH1 is equal to 120 and leaving at 60 degrees, uh, 60 degrees Celsius. Okay, 60 degrees Celsius it is living. Okay, so uh, it is living at, uh, it is entering at 120, living at 60. Specific heats of water are, uh, and oil, both oil and water, it is given 4.2 and 2. So for water, uh, for water, it is, uh, okay, one minute. So uh, for water, it is given 4.2, okay, 4.2. So for water, uh, this is CP, CPC for water, it is equal to 4.2. Uh, I think it is Joule per uh, kg Kelvin, 4.2. Okay, so it is kilojoule, huh? it is kilojoule. So we, we have to be very careful about this one, kilojoule it is given. 4.2 and 2 kilojoule, uh, 2 kilojoule for hot fluid, that is for all oil. Two kilojoule per kg Kelvin. Okay, respectively. The overall heat transfer coefficient is given 400. Okay, so U is equal to given as 400. It is given in watt, watt per meter square Kelvin. Okay, this is given. The required heat transfer area we have to calculate. Okay, here we have to calculate the value of A. Okay. Now we have to calculate A. A will come in the formula for total heat transfer U, A and heat IM. So we will get here A. Okay. The, uh, we have to calculate this value A. Okay. Now for calculating A, uh, U is given. We have to concentrate on calculating theta IM. So theta IM will be uh, here theta 1 minus theta 2 divided by ln. This is theta 1 minus, uh, divided by theta 2. So we have to calculate, if we calculate this theta m and we have to calculate this q also, okay. Okay, this is also unknown. We, we want this q also uh, and we want this theta m. So theta m first we will concentrate on theta m. Theta m is theta 1. So theta theta 1 will get from here. This is very simple, uh, 120 uh, minus 8. Huh? Uh, theta m 8.8. Ah, so theta, oh yes, theta m will get from here 120 minus 80 and theta 2 is 60 minus 40. 
so this is this we, this we can calculate we have to calculate now so only the unknown is what uh, so okay after calculating this it i am the second uh, parameter is q we have to calculate q uh, how we will calculate this q so q uh, this is very simple you either use m c uh, delta t for hot fluid or you can or you can use the m c delta t for the uh, the cold fluid so because both for both the uh, the cpc and cph values are given so you can use suppose if you use for cold fluid so then this is cph and i'm using for cold so this is tc2 now so this is tc2 minus tc1 okay tc2 minus 4 so mc is given 1.5 uh, kilojoule per second cpc is given 4.2 kilojoule per kg kelvin and tc2 value is 80 and tc1 value is 40 but you are you will get a value in kilowatt remember here you will get a value here this is this will come in kilowatt okay and here this is in watt this is in watt u is given in watt okay so this value this this value should be in watt so you have to convert this value into watt so this this is the only uh, care you have to take on while calculating this value okay don't take this uh, why this value will come in kilowatt because the, here this is in kilojoule per kg kelvin value will come in kilowatt okay otherwise you multiply this 10 raised to power 3 you will get the value in watt okay so and u value is given in watt so the right time uh, uh, the right hand term will uh, will have a, will having the unit of watt so the left hand side is also have we should have the value of uh, the unit of watt so you have to convert that into watt so convert that watt and you will get the answer okay so if you can calculate these things you will get the answer as 21.84 just calculate this value you will get the answer as 21.84 okay so this is again the simple thing okay so what what we have done uh, area we have to calculate the area term will come in the total heat transfer so q is equal to ua theta m we have to there are two unknowns are there u is given theta m we have to calculate and q we have to calculate q you can calculate using these two value or uh, two equations okay and theta m value we can calculate using this Use, uh, we, we can calculate using this uh, the formula theta 1 minus theta 2 ln theta uh, theta 1 minus theta 2 okay so we can calculate the values here okay so this is the value and after that uh, put uh, the only the things you have to remember here q you have to convert this in watt because this will come in kilowatt because cp is given in kilojoule per kg kelvin so answer will come in kilowatt convert that into watt you will get the answer answer will come as the uh, t 21.84 okay so this is the solution for this problem okay <clears throat> now uh, let us go to the uh, next question mm, i think this is the last one yes so last question now again the steam in the condenser so again the uh, this is the questions uh, uh, related with the condenser okay this is related with the condenser so what we have to do what is the diagram for the condenser so the diagram for the condenser means it is the uh, temperature uh, remains safe th1 th2 and cold fluid temperature will increase from tc1 to tc2 okay so this is the diagram for the condenser uh, thermal power plant is to be condensed at a temperature of 30 degrees celsius okay 30 degrees celsius is the temperature is the temperature for the condenser so this is 30 degrees celsius here steam okay then with cooling water which enters the tube of the condenser at 40 degrees celsius and exit at 22 or uh, 22 degrees celsius so 14 and uh, 14 and 22 so this temperature is 14 and this temperature is 22 okay this is 22 degrees celsius this is 14 degrees celsius okay the two temperatures are given now overall heat transfer is given that is equal to 2000 watt per meter square kelvin uh, u is given okay so value is 2000 watt per meter square kelvin okay and total surface area is 50 meter square okay area is also given area is equal to 50 meter square okay net uh, heat transfer in megawatt okay so this is also important okay net heat transfer in megawatt net heat transfer means what we have to calculate the value and this should be in megawatt okay we have to calculate now what is the uh, the the value q is equal to we know that q is equal to u a and theta m okay uh, initial value is watt here okay uh, sorry unit is watt here 
So u is given, a is given. We have to calculate theta m. So theta m is equal to theta one minus theta two divided by ln divided by here theta one divided divided by theta two. Now what is this theta one? So theta one is equal to thirty minus forty. So this is theta one. Okay. So thirty minus fourteen here. This is theta one. What is this theta two? So this is this this value. So thirty minus twenty two. So if you calculate, you will get the values of theta. But answer will come in VAT. Okay. So once the answer comes in VAT, you have to divide this by ten raised to power six kilo mega. So ten raised to power six, you have to divide, and then you will get the answer in megawatt. Okay. Uh, Initially, so it comes in one point one point one point one point one point yes one five four. So the answer is one point one five four. That is the correct answer. Okay. So here, uh, see, uh, don't be in a hurry to write down the answer because once you one, uh, when you calculate the answer, it will come in watt. Okay. If you divide it by ten to the power six, so that will come into megawatt. Okay. So that thing you have to write down. So this answer is one point one five four. So this is the fill in the blanks type question is there. So the answer will come out to be one point one five four. Uh, correct it to two decimal places. So this is one point one five. This is the answer. Okay. So <clears throat> see, maximum type of the questions are as in the condenser. Okay, not in the evaporator. Though though the questions will be in the evaporator, it is again simple. The diagram will be different. Uh, in in that case, you have to take the cold cold temp uh, cold field temperature constant and hot field temperature will decrease. So again, in this case, this is equal to theta one and this is equal to theta two. So this is Tc one is equal to Tc two. Okay, if if the question is of evaporator, this is Th one and this is Th two. So just uh, practice the diagrams. Okay, if you practice the diagrams, see these these formulas are very simple. Okay, and you can calculate uh, the unknown values. Okay, so these are all the questions related with your LMTD. And in the next lecture, what we'll do, we'll 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 uh, we will take the uh, gate questions based on the NTU method, effectiveness and the NTU method. Okay. So for today's class, we will stop here. Then uh, any questions related to any content, you can ask me. Otherwise, we'll stop here. Uh, let me put the uh, that uh, the <clears throat> feedback link. Okay, just wait for the minute. Let me. Uh, so this is the feedback link. Okay, so feedback link is given in the in the uh, chat box. Okay, so just fill your feedback for the today's lecture, and for the another lecture that is that is for the. Uh, NTU methods. So we will discuss that in the next lecture. So thank you very much.